Hello and welcome to Pickleball Therapy, the podcast dedicated to your pickleball improvement. My name is Tony Roy. I'm your podcast host. I'm a master teacher professional as well as a senior professional pickleball player. Together with my partner, CJ Johnson, we are dedicated to helping you transform your game, which is today's subject, transformation. How do we, how do we, how do we transform ourselves as pickleball players as opposed to simply learning a new shot or learning a new strategy? It's a big difference between the two, and that's what we're going to talk about in today's podcast. Before we dive into the podcast, um, this is a special episode. We're dropping it a little bit early this week on Wednesday. We have on Thursday the 20th our workshop on the ultimate game plan. Spoiler, it's the soft game, but it's a soft game in a way that maybe you haven't thought about before, and it's really going to help you think about your game differently. That's why we call it transformational teaching. Uh, It's a type of teaching that CJ and I are really focused on, as I'll discuss more in today's uh, podcast. I want to talk to you about how you can transform your game, how you you can enter a period of transformation in your game, as opposed to, again, simply searching out different shots, and it'll really help you improve your relationship with pickleball. But if you haven't signed up for our workshop yet, highly recommend you check it out. Uh, It's on Thursday, and our next class for the pickleball system opens the same day. Uh, Registration's already open now, but basically the the class starts then, uh, and registration enrollment closes, I believe it's the 27th of memory serves. So you have a little bit of time, but don't let this opportunity pass if you're ready for this type of commitment to your game, this type of transformational change in your game. All right, let's talk about transformation. What do we what do we mean when we talk about transforming ourselves as pickleball players? I think the easiest way to do this is with an example, with a shot. And this is a shot we're all familiar with, which is the third, third shot drop. You know, we all have a general idea of what the shot looks like. Uh, and when you hit it, it's after all in the name of the shot, right? The third shot. Things change though for you when you start understanding that the third shot isn't only for the third shot. In other words, it's a shot that you can use beyond the third for the fifth, the seventh, the ninth. You can even use it on the return side if you're ever in trouble. It's a shot that you use whenever you're in a positional disadvantage. Doesn't matter when that is. When you're in a positional disadvantage, that's when you're going to use it. And speaking of positional advantage, disadvantage, that's one of those transformational concepts. Um, you know, if you attended one of our, our prior mini series uh, workshops that we, we've done in connection with the system, you know that we talk about the serve is not the same as a return is one of the most important concepts in the game. The key there is that the, there's a positional advantage, disadvantage, and that's part of understanding the framework of pickleball. The third shot arises because of a positional disadvantage that one team, generally the serve team, has. Your relationship with that shot or your understanding of that shot also changes when you start understanding that there are two powerful forces in pickleball that you activate when you hit that ball. It's not just, okay, I'm going to hit this thing called a third shot. It sort of looks like this, and I know I've done a good job if I execute that shot. Your understanding goes deeper than that, and you start understanding that the shot isn't really what drives the decision making. In other words, it's not, I'm going to hit the shot because of the shot. I'm hitting the shot because of the rules of pickleball. You know, there, there's, there's, uh, there's some rules that, that, it, that and the, the way the game is played that dictate the shot. And more specifically, let me be specific about it. Uh, we hit the third shot the way we do, the drop we do, for two reasons. For two reasons. One, first, excuse me, it accomplishes our objective. We are in a positional disadvantage, we're trying to neutralize that disadvantage. So this shot accomplishes an objective. Again, it's not the shot for the shot's sake, right? For the shot itself. We're doing it because it accomplishes uh, an objective of ours. And the second reason is the shot works within the framework of the game that we play, of pickleball. And more specifically, the design of the court that we play on, the way the rules are written, the type of court we play on, that's why we had the third shot drop because of that and because it accomplishes our objectives. Now, how do you gain transformation in your game relative to the third shot? Is when you start understanding how these pieces work together. When you start understanding how the rules of the game, the design of the court, and your objective when you're at a disadvantage makes this shot make sense for you. And you go, you know what? It, it, it almost becomes obvious at that point where you say, of course I want to hit a third shot drop. It was just sort of go, duh, why would I not hit a third shot drop? It's the perfect shot in that situation. Not simply, I'm going to hit that shot because that's what somebody told me. That's what I saw. I see other players do, or that's what I see on TV. That's what players do, so I'm going to do it. 
you now are in the driver's seat of your own game. You're the one saying, of course I want to hit that shot because I understand that the framework of the game, the rules and how the course designed, plus my objectives, make that shot the obvious choice. And it's, it's really, I wanted to give you an analogy slash metaphor. It's, it's the difference between, say you wanted to bake a loaf of bread, okay? And you look up a recipe. And the recipe will tell you to use a little packet. It's, I think, a teaspoon and a quarter, usually in a packet, of yeast for your recipe. So you get the flour, you get the other ingredients, the water, you throw your, your yeast in there, you mix it up, leave it for a couple hours, put it in the oven, great, you got a loaf of bread. That's one way of baking, okay? And there's nothing wrong with that way of baking. That's sort of like hitting the third shot because the recipe said to hit the third shot. But what if you actually start understanding how the yeast is a living organism and how you're waking it out of its slumber and it's interacting with the other ingredients to give you the leavening that you want to get out of, the, out of that product, right? How it's interacting with the... the, the it's interacting with what you're doing. It's part of the, the canvas that you're working in and you're creating this beautiful bread um, by using yeast as one of your ingredients, but you understand it more deeply. And even more deeply, you start understanding, wait a minute, I can use that same yeast to do other things as well, to ferment, to make beer, you can do all sorts of things with yeast. So you start having a deeper relationship with not just baking, but with the, the processes that are involved in baking. And it's the same thing with pickleball, right? So, you know, when we first start playing pickleball, what happens? We just get told, do this, hit that ball over there, run over here, that type of thing, right? So it's basically the same thing you did when you first baked the loaf of bread. You saw a recipe that said, use a packet of yeast, you put a packet of yeast, not really understanding perhaps how the, everything worked together. And what happens is we, when we play pickleball that way, and it's no criticism here, no judgment of anybody here, perfectly, you're, you're entitled, anybody's entitled to play however they want to play. But... You know, but but a lot of times players play in a way that they don't really understand why they're doing what they're doing. And what happens is, you know, we get told things, do this, do that. We can't evaluate the quality of the information we're receiving. So, you know, many times the information that we're receiving is actually incorrect. And it leads us down a, a path of playing in a way that is not going to be the best for us long term. But what happens? We don't have the the wherewithal, the mental wherewithal, or the understanding of the game that's good enough for us to say, wait a minute, I'm not doing that. So why would I do that? That doesn't make any sense in our mind, right? Why would I do that? We, we're not able to challenge those statements that are made to us. The reason is because we don't understand the, the whys of the things that we're being told. We don't understand framework. We don't understand objectives. And without that understanding, we can't, we're not in a position to uh, challenge uh, information we're receiving, even when that information is wrong. So I wrote this down. I want to read it because it's, it's, I wanted to get my thoughts clear on this to, to communicate it to you. So transformation for you as a pickleball player occurs when you pivot away from chasing shots or techniques to studying and understanding the game itself. When you start understanding the framework of pickleball, how the game is constructed, and how its rules create the canvas on which we paint our pickleball games. That's how you can think about transforming as a pickleball player, you know, to engage, entering a, a, a phase of transformation for yourself in terms of your relationship with pickleball. And it's a much deeper relationship that you end up with. So you end up with a much deeper connection with the sport um, that that most of us will enjoy for the rest of our lives. Your relationship with that sport will be much deeper. And again, I want to be clear here. I, it's no criticism or judgment here. You know, every player is entitled to enjoy the sport however they choose to enjoy it. If players want to go out there and bat the ball around, there's no, it's perfectly fine for them to do that. But I can tell you for myself personally, and I'm going to guess for you, if you're listening to this, you want a deeper relationship. You want more out of this game. Um, I, for one, and I know CJ as well, we want to know pickleball in our bones. We want to know it like just in our DNA. And if you want to do that, you can do it as well by engage by entering this transformational phase in your game. And that's really the mission that CJ and I have set for ourselves. You know, the easy path for us would be to just simply make YouTube videos. We know how to do that. We know how to do top 10 tips. You know, these are top five beginner mistakes, top six intermediate mistakes. We know what sells on YouTube, what, what players click on. But we also know that those videos, without more, 
are not going to change your game radically, are not going to are not going to transform a player's game. And that's what CJ and I wish to do with our uh, in our role as pickleball instructors, and it's our it's our mission in 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 the sport. And that's why we embarked on and ultimately constructed the pickleball system. It's really it's the only program of its kind where you get an entire year of pickleball learning, which is guided through framework. It's guided through a transformation uh, of you as a player. Uh, you come out of the other end com- a completely different player in this. And I'm going to read just in a second uh, uh, a, a, some feedback we got from one of our players who, like, and it's not a criticism, it's perfectly fine. Like many players, not many, but a lot of players say, wait a minute, how can I learn this online? That's kind of nuts, right? Uh, and so that resistance, we know the resistance is out there and we, we expect it to, to a certain extent because this is a sport and how can you not help me if you're not on the court with me? So I'm going to read you Nate's uh, in a second. But the key is when you come out of the other end of this pickleball system course, you have a different relationship with the game. Your understanding is different. Um, and there's a calmness and a confidence that comes from that level of understanding that is hard to, to communicate to someone who hasn't felt it. And perhaps what you can do is think about it in your own personal lives. You know, when you had a, an area of your life that you maybe previously engaged in, whether it's a prior sport, a job, you know, a home care, whatever it is that you did that you were very proficient at. And, and, and remember the calmness and confidence you had in that arena where if I said to you, well, this is how you do it. And you could look at me and say, well, let me explain to you why that's not the case and walk me through the rationale of why that, that w- wouldn't apply. The same thing happens in pickleball where you as a capable human being can understand pickleball in a way where when someone at the court says to you, hey, do this, you can say, whether in your mind or out loud, it's up to you, but you can say, you know what, that makes sense, I'm going to incorporate that. Or you can also say, you know, that really doesn't make sense given the framework of this game, given the objectives I have when I'm playing on the serve side, the return side, et cetera. But you have that knowledge now, and that's what's transformational about um about the pickleball system and about learning and pickleball. And I, and I want to be clear, I'm not trying to talk you into the pickleball system. If it's not, you're not ready for it, or it's something that doesn't interest you, that's fine. Uh, As I said, there's no criticism or judgment here. What I'd recommend is that if you do want to have a transformational experience with the sport, if you want to have this, uh, I almost make it sound transcendental, but it is, it's it's a different relationship with the sport. Study the sport. You know, study games, study, you know, study the, the rules, think through the game, think through things that work and don't work and why they work and don't work. That's how CJ and I came up with the pickleball system, came up with our, uh, our approach, the three pillars and everything else that we use inside the pickleball system was through this process. So you can do it as well. Uh, you know, but if you want to have this transformational experience and I'm telling you, it's well worth it. Uh, again, go back to any other situation where you felt calm and confident and know what's going on. You can do the same with pickleball. The reason I recommend the pickleball system so highly is because I know it works based on not just the fact that we created it, but based on the feedback that we get from our students. And I also know it's a, it's a surefire way for you to get where you want to go with the sport. But let me read you Nate's, uh, Nate's, um, uh, Nate's feedback. So I'm just reading now. So this is solid gold. I'm participating in their TPS at this time. TPS is the pickleball system, if you're not familiar with that terminology. So I'm participating in their TPS at this time. And this is where it's transformational. This is my words. I mean, those are my words. These are his words. It's requiring a complete restructuring of my play and mindset. And that's absolutely correct. There is a complete transformation of your mindset and the way that you think about pickleball when you start approaching it the way that we teach it inside the pickleball system. This is not simply, oh, I learned a nice new shot and I'm carry on my life you will actually change how you experience the sport because you'll understand what's going on out there. All right, he continues like this. I've been stuck for years as an inconsistent 3.5. It's a very common story that this, that, that, that they have been uh, stuck at 3.5, 3.0, 3.5, common stopping places for players. For the first time, I believe their path will get my game to 4.0. It will take a lot of work, because I've embedded so much poor shot selection and execution into my game over the years. Being a stubborn fool doesn't help either, but their training is slowly sinking in. Then sign Nate. 
So, and, and Nate, thank you for, uh, for your feedback on the, on your experience with the pickleball system. And I can tell you that this, it's a very, um, pithy and complete elaboration of the experience that players have when they come in through the pickleball system, but it is not unique to Nate. It, this is an, uh, it's, it, it's the similar experience that other players have once they go through the system, trust the process, follow the process, you know, study the videos that are in there and do the work uh, that's required. Um, so if you're already a part of the pickleball system and you listen to this podcast, understand that you're, what you're going undergoing is a transformation. You are working through a, a complete, I'm going to use his words again, complete restructuring of your play and mindset through the pickleball system. But you'll come out the other end, a, a, if you want to think about it like a butterfly, you'll come out like a butterfly on the other end with a much better understanding of the sport and an ability to execute shots and strategies in a way that was not possible before you underwent that transformation. If you're not yet inside the pickleball system, I cannot encourage you enough to do it. Um, obviously, everybody has to make decisions for themselves in terms of whether it's right for you at this time, whether you're ready for this type of commitment. It is a one-year commitment that you're making to yourself uh, to work on your pickleball game, to study the game, and to understand it differently and, and more deeply. But if you're ready for that, our class is starting now. Highly recommend you uh, you check it out and uh, and join us inside the pickleball system. At a minimum, highly recommend you join us for our workshop on uh, Thursday, July 20th, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. It's called the Ultimate Game Plan Workshop. It will give you an idea of how transformational this sort of teaching can be because we're going to be talking about shots that you're familiar with but in a way that you may not on um, you may not have previously thought about how they work together and, and can help you play much more confident and better pickleball. Um, if it's the time is right for you, we would love it if we were allowed to help you transform your pickleball. That's this week's podcast. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Uh, if you enjoyed it, share with your friends. Remember, if you enjoyed the podcast, they probably will too. Transformation is in reach, folks. You can get it. We'll see you in the next one. Uh, we'll see you at the next podcast.